Hi, and welcome to my Prusa XL semi-assembled build video. This isn't going to be long and drawn out, just the highlights of things that you might run into problems with. From the outset, I'm very confident of my build so far. There were a number of places that were tricky, but everything's worked out for me. So, some ground rules. I know you're excited. Get some sleep. Take your time. Enjoy building this. You waited a long time for it. You might as well enjoy every part of it. So next, read all the comments. That's what everybody else says as you're going through. You can tell where the problems are because that's where there's a lot of comments. Okay? Um, don't tighten everything. Don't tighten screws down until you've got everything fitted together. At any section, if you've got five or six screws to all go together, wait until you've got them all inserted a bit, all in place, everything fits, then you tighten down. Finally, if there's something that seems really hard, stop, okay? Nothing was really, really hard. There were a couple of stressful points where yes, it took an effort, but you shouldn't be hurting anything, you shouldn't be breaking any tools, okay? Let's go. First step is unpacking. The key points about unpacking to do when you're doing it is this is a build plate, right? Don't unpack it. Just keep the foam on it. You'll use it later to protect the heated bed because it says get a box. You don't need a box. You just need that. Second, these pieces the, called linear rails, okay, they come attached to this extrusion, which I'll show a little more later. They come with a piece of foam and probably two or more of these green stoppers, right? These stoppers are not in the right place because this bar should be down below them, but don't take these out. That's the message. Do not, do not, do not take these out until the last minute. Okay, I've removed some of the pieces to help with the big picture overview of what's going on. So first step of the procedure is you'll take this bottom build plate You'll add these four extrusions, two, three, and four, still with the green stoppers, and the display, and mount them on. Next step, we'll add this piece. It's called the Core XY unit. It's pretty much all assembled for you already. Then you'll add the back plate. Then you'll add the heated bed inside. These pieces, and then the parts I haven't done yet, which is just adding on the extruders. So the things to get straight here, the things to watch out for are one, these two arms on this side, sorry, you can't see them very well because of the bed. There and there, they're different, okay? This one has more screws and it's firmly mounted. This one's wobbly and has less screws. Wobbly on the right side, okay? That's one thing. Uh, next, a lot of this, or where, the, where the big problems in the comments come, are with the press fit pieces. So at the base here, it's not too bad. You have to torque it down and it press fits into the extrusion. Bigger problem is up here when you're fitting on the Core XY unit, getting it all organized. Please have a look closely there. There is no gap, right, between these two spaces. So that's important later. And that's really the biggest areas to look out for. Okay, let's start with the first problem set on the bottom side, at least what there were a lot of comments about. Actually, very few comments, but a problem for me. If you think this piece is missing, okay, it's not, it's fallen inside that piece. See? Okay. So the first place that people run into trouble is the wiring. And the trick here is to bundle it up nicely, take your time, and tape it, okay? Feed it around, put the ribbon cable in first, all stacked like that, and then put the grounding wire on top. Bring it across, come over. Right here you can see it joins with another stepper motor that goes on top of the other bundle, comes across, and then we're gonna curve up 
to the back of the unit, but we won't do any more with that at this point. Like I said, just keep taping things together and make it easy on yourself. People have a little bit of trouble with this corner piece. Notice that it's got little cutouts here so they can flex together at this point. The main trick is to fit the grounding wire inside between the clips to keep it away from the pinching the ribbon cable. And then it does go in pretty easily if everything's out of the way. You want to work backwards from here and play with your wires getting the right length. This fits underneath there, goes in. Just make sure you have enough room for the correct extrusion to get down to there and fit this piece in covering it at the end. Okay, still on the bottom section build, I'm looking now at this extrusion and where we bolt them into the, the base unit. The important thing here is it introduces this torque wrench, so to, so called. Um, it comes with a little handle like that, and as you can see, the idea is you're going to twist and bend it, and it's going to come down and curve with that line. I think this is the three millimeter hex wrench. Ideally, you want to find another one so you can have it spare, so you don't have to take this plastic bit off all the time um, if you need it without the torque unit. So it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna look close, twist it, and keep going until it's bent, just enough to line up with that mark. Now you see I've marked this, particular hex wrench because it is the one that came with the unit. Uh, this is probably an important piece because it's the one with the right flex for the torque wrench and you don't want to get it mixed up with your spare. Now again these bottom units they press fit into the extrusion and you just have to work slowly nobody seems to have a big problem with that but later when you're doing the same things up underneath this way, people do seem to have problems, and in particular, they have problems because they don't get this part seated down gently enough, or well enough. So the trick here is wiggle these pieces, get it as far down as you can, and then tighten slowly, but work your way all around the device. Um, do a star pattern, like you would for tightening a tire, this piece is very important that you have it stressed properly and sunk down properly if you want to have the first layer correct. Okay, while we're here and we've introduced the torque wrench, let's talk about some other little details and technique. So first, we use these things, which I'd never seen before, maybe you have. They go in like this, okay? Pretty simple, and then they're just spring-loaded and they slide back and forth. Next, you've got these pieces, which are little grounding straps or pieces. You can see they've got sharp points and they're gonna dig into the aluminum extrusion. So ideally, you only want that to go in one time, otherwise you'll mark up your extrusion. Then we have these pieces, which as you can see are 3D printed, have a little hole in them. They just go in, there's a good place, and they twist like that. Okay, now later for this side, we put this panel back in, right? So you can see you've got all these positions. What you want to do is get all the screws in place before you tighten these down because you don't quite know where they're going to go. So get everything in place, go around the other side, tighten that screw, tighten the top one, tighten the side ones, and then tighten everything down fully. Here's one more quick tip. When you're screwing into these pieces, you can tell they're plastic. Just stop as soon as the screw seats in. They're really easy to strip out if you keep turning, so just take it easy. Okay, back together, back to the build. So the whole Core XY unit going on isn't too big of a deal, but it is stressful getting these pieces 
sunk down, getting the unit sunk down on top of these extrusions. Um, just take your time, go slowly, that's the, probably the hardest part. Now a bit later, it comes time to install the heated bed. I suggest you go off script a little bit here. There is a point at which you remove this cover and you attach these wires. And what I recommend is you follow the comments and go ahead and attach the, the flexi cable here um, with these screws onto the heated bed at that time. Uh, the problem is, obviously, if you try to do it in this configuration, once the bed is all mounted, you're working underneath and it just might be a little bit harder. Now we come to the part that I think is most complicated or seems to cause the most trouble for people. Uh, my advice here is to go completely off script. Uh, don't follow directions, follow what people say in the comments. So the directions say that the goal now is to attach these units, there's a good one, these units with this big piece and the cable harness coming off of it. And what they say to do is you set it in place, work on that one, set it in place up against the thing and then you go through this what's called the honeycomb um, and reach through with this screwdriver, sorry this hex wrench, tighten it down and you're doing another press fit job. Okay, so you've got to squeeze this metal bracket into the extrusion, into the aluminum extrusion and actually make some space for it. So the easier way to do it is to start with removing this panel. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six screws back in a minute. Sorry, six screws and this little grounding cable, which we put on ourselves. Where's the ground? There which we put on ourselves earlier. Obviously I have all of these in place. What the, like I said, the instructions are having you reach through the honeycomb to this, right, into this center hole to tighten it down. Already this makes it a bit easier, but really what I recommend is you use the torque screwdriver and remove the top and the bottom. Okay, now we've got it fully out of the way, and you can see, whoops, there, if we focus a bit, there is just that one screw. So now we can get the hex wrench in here and have the long bar to twist on and do the torque properly so you can gently sink down this unit. And as you can see, I've got no wobble at all, I'm shaking my entire 3D printer when I do this. There's no play at all um, for that unit. Then once you're done, slap it all back together. Oh, and it's important, this aluminum piece that it threads into, that people strip the threads and break and everything else, um, it's got to be slid all the way to the left side. Sorry, again, we're messing up left and right because this is what's called the left side of the printer, but we're looking in the back, we're sliding all the way to the left here because it's important that it be pressed this way and there's nothing to hold it into position. Now, one more thing to think about, because I've read online that this seems to be one of the biggest headache parts of the whole printer is these pieces coming loose. So I'd like to put a little bit of Loctite. Since I don't have Loctite, I'm gonna use a tiny bit of fingernail polish on the threads just at the end, not enough to get on the plastic where it'll do any damage. Um, once this piece has all been sunk down, you can take the screw back out and paint it and put your screw in, tighten it down, and it'll stay, should stay forever until you want to take it out. Okay, it's next extruder installation time. These pieces here wipe the nozzle and you want to get them all the way down so they're not pushed up against the nozzle to begin with. You'll adjust them properly later but when you're first putting them in 
you don't want to be bending them. One more place to go off script is to go ahead and install these socks on the next extruder hot ends um, while the units are outside. Um, I find you have to loosen the hot end just a little bit to get them on, but otherwise smooth sailing. Okay, next extruder is all mounted, everything went easily, so Prusa says it's good to go and fire up. In fact, I think there's two things left to do from reading the comments. You want to go and tweak the belt tension, or at least make sure it's the right thing. And then when you first power it on, get your newest firmware on this memory stick and plug it in. That's how you update firmware, and you want to have the latest firmware when you start up. Good luck with yours. So a few more things before I finish off, mainly on the belt tensioning. There's a few steps to it. The app is a web page. It's not really an app, but you get it, you tweak it, give it just one solid pulse, and let the tone settle. You can see it's not completely stable. Step two, we look for what's called racking on a Core XY printer. And that's where we take this central bar, the X axis, bring it all the way to the front. Oops, there, bring it all the way to the front. Should be touching on both sides. If it's not touching on both sides, in particular, if there's a gap, say on this side, and you can squeeze this together here and feel it flex, you still have some adjustment to do on your belt tension. Keep doing it and tweaking with the phone app to get the right frequency until these are nice and solid. For step three, you have to print this tower. Um, it takes up to 2.5 hours or a bit more to print fully. But while you're printing it, you adjust the belt tension and tweak it, and you're trying to get the smoothest walls. If you go uh, too tight, I think it says you get layer shifts, and too loose, and it will be a worse surface. Now, I'm not entirely certain, but I think what they're trying to do is deal with these vertical banding lines here that you can only see if you get the reflection just right. I think that's reasonably good, but fundamentally I believe this is a problem of printers where you have a linear relationship between the stepper motor and the print head, like a Core XY or a Bedslinger i3 design. If the lines really bother you, then I'm sorry, I think you have to go for a totally different geometry of printer design, more like this Cossel Delta. So for this one, to move up and down, you have this rotational relationship between the stepper motors and their print head, and I've simply never seen the vertical banding on this printer in under any conditions. So if it's not obvious, I am super happy with my five tool head Prusa XL. This print is exactly what came off of the heated bed when it finished printing. There was no stringing, at least not externally, and it just works. I would have made it with a little bit tighter tolerances, actually. So I'm really looking forward to what I can do with this in the future, and I hope your build goes as well as mine did. Please don't think that this video means you don't have to read the instructions. This was only about where you can go off script and maybe do a little bit better. Good luck with yours. And thanks for watching.